Hey guys, welcome to another Gold Girl Girl Talk. I am really pleased how the first one went and I'm really pleased about all the comments. So I thought I would start out by telling you exactly who I voted for for president and why I chose that. No, I'm totally kidding, totally kidding. Not even addressing that we're done, it's over. Okay, no, would I am <laughs> little levity we could use a little bit um what i am going to talk about are the comments so what i am going to do is sort of sum up the comments because someone gave a great suggestion that not everybody reads through all the comments and i totally get that and i would just give you a general synopsis or a summary i guess of what happened there so the big topic that everybody weighed in on and it was hysterical some of the comments were really funny. Um, but the big topic that everyone wanted to weigh in on was the matter of the Goldberg family birth control. And the, I'll just sum it up by saying the main comment could be summed up by saying, Michael, take one for the team. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people um, either had personal experience with a vasectomy as far as their husbands getting one or, um, and or highly recommended it for Michael. Uh, at this point, I think we're good. I think I'm going to stick with, with the Marina um, because the side effects that I thought I was experiencing stopped. And I'll talk a little bit actually about the Marina because I feel like it's a good place to talk about it during Girl Talk. So why am I on the Marina IUD and why do I like it and all that stuff. So I was on, oh my God, and if my kids are watching this, like go watch something else, please. This is horrible. Um, so... I was on birth control pills in some variety or another. I can't even remember which brand or in what form they were. But um, for many years, I was on birth control pills. And I found that I get migraines. And my migraines are triggered by many things. But one of the for sure things that triggers my migraines are hormones. And it seemed that um, the way the hormones go through the cycle on birth control pills, that the birth control pills were definitely triggering my migraines not good. So that was the big reason why I went off birth control pills. Um, also, there is conflicting evidence about um, how safe they are for women over 35. Um, anyway, but for me, it was really the migraines. They're no, they're no fun. And if you can lower your risk of getting them, then I'm all for that. So that was why I did that. I chose the Marina because one of the great advantages for me is that once it was in place, I don't get periods. And a marina can last, is it five? Five to seven years, I think? I think it's five. Anyway, somewhere between five and seven years. Can you imagine? No periods? Like almost virtually no period. Once, once or twice a year for one day, that's it. I mean, come on, who wouldn't want? I don't want, I mean, it's awesome. So that by itself, even if Michael got a vasectomy, I'd probably still keep it in because it's awesome. Um, the side effect that I thought I was experiencing was um, hair loss. I, my hair was shedding at a much more rapid rate than normal. It turns out that's also a side effect of Synthroid. So I'm not sure which one it was, but in either case, it stopped. And, you know, thinking about what I've gone through the last few months, you know, when I'm living, when you're living your life, you don't really think about, oh, this is a stressful event or this kind of was emotional. You just kind of get through your day. But like on paper, when you are doing one of those questionnaires where it says, how much stress are you under? Have you experienced any of these things? You go, oh, yeah, that was, you know, Jake leaving for college. That was a major change in our family structure. That was pretty stressful. Um, Bosley dying, our dog, yes, but still a family member, that was pretty stressful. Shane's recent illness and hospital stay, obviously more stressful for Shane. Maybe not though because, because he's a child and doesn't fully understand the extent of how bad that could have been and what he will be dealing with for the rest of his life. So pretty st stressful on a parent. Worrying about your the other kid away at school, like just stuff, right? So all that, I guess, could have contributed to hair falling out. Um, it seems to have stopped. So I don't know. So I'm happy with my birth control for now. I am exploring other options. Uh, many of you recommended 
Paragard, which is an IUD similar to the Marina, but different in that there are no actual hormones. It is just a physical barrier. So that might be when it's time to pull out the Marina, maybe I will sup, uh, replace it with Paragard. I will talk to my uh, OBGYN about that alternative. So I just wanted to sum all that up. That's what's, that's, that was the big topic. That was the one topic that got the most feedback was birth control. So while we're on the topic of medicine, healthcare, something I wanted to bring up was obviously the big event in the last month of my life was Shane got sick and we had a lot of interaction with doctors, with staying in a hospital, dealing with healthcare insurance. And we are, if you're an American, most of you watching, not all of you, but most of you watching this video are Americans. Um, we are in the period of open enrollment where if you, well, even I think, even if you get in your insurance through your employer, you have the option of choosing your healthcare plan right now. So um, that's interesting. And every year we reevaluate our healthcare insurance and see if it's the best option for us. And it seems like every year there are less and less options and those that are available are more and more expensive. And this is not a discussion about politics. It's just, this is what it is. And there's not a lot we can do about it, but it is interesting now having experienced, you know, a major hospital stay and what that, well, I still don't know exactly how much that's going to cost. Those bills are still showing up, but, um, what you have to do to stay on top of it, I should say, and, and um, the sheer amount of paperwork that's involved and phone calls. And, you know, I have found that it is always best to be proactive in all things, especially so when it comes to dealing with health insurance and making sure you have coverage and little things like while we were waiting to check into, get into a room, I called our insurance company and let them know what was happening just to make sure that it was going to be covered. Um, I was really lucky in that our pediatrician called ahead and gave them a heads up and kind of got the paperwork started, so to speak. So that was really helpful. It helps to have a doctor who's kind of on board with your health insurance and knows how to deal with all that. Cause my head was just spinning. Um, and they came back and said, well, the first 72 hours are approved. Well, at that point we didn't know how long Shane was going to be in the hospital. And I thought, Oh, no problem. We'll be well, that turned into a week-long stay, and I found out later that many times when you uh, are diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, it's a two- or three-week hospital stay. And we're still waiting to find out if the rest of his stay is covered. It's still in review. I'm fairly confident. I'm very confident that it will be covered, but, I mean, still, that's a scary thought to think, what if they deny his claim? So, you know, I'm not waiting to find out. I am, you know, Michael and I are constantly calling every few days, checking in with our liaison that's been assigned to us, you know, to make sure they're on top of things, asking them, what do you need to make this go faster? What do you need to get approval? Communicating with our doctor, letting them, him know what they're looking for. It's, it's like it's a full-time job right there, just dealing with a health insurance company. My point in telling you all this is not to complain, um, about our coverage, it's good coverage, or to complain about the process. I mean, it is what it is, There's, we can't change it. But um, I guess it's to just ask you all, like what, what are your experiences like? I guess the reason I'm bringing this up is from my personal experience. I go out with my girlfriends, I go out for coffee, lunch, we sit around a table, sit in the football bleachers, and we talk about our kids and school and sales and makeup and, what's on TV or whatever. But I mean, I've never sat around a table and talked with my friends about our healthcare options or what it's like to choose an insurance plan and how to file a claim or what do you do if your claim's denied? I mean, these are things we should be talking about and educating ourselves on and not waiting until after something bad happens and trying to figure out if you're doing it all right and are there better ways to do it? Like we all know, uh, tips to highlight our cheekbones, but maybe not tips to make sure you're doing everything right when you're navigating through the process of healthcare. So I just wanted to open it up and see if y'all have any tips to give each other and all of us here. So that was the point of this whole conversation. I don't really have any advice to give you because I don't, I'm learning myself, but I just wanted to open it up um, because we are all very intelligent people and we have a lot more to offer than just talking about makeup, which is 
one of my favorite topics, but there's more to life than, than just that. Um, the last thing I want to talk about uh, in this month's Gold Girl Girl Talk is uh, a question that was asked was, how are you preparing for the next stage of your life, like when the kids are gone? And I really wasn't, it's sort of in the way back of my head because I'm like, ah, I got so much time. But I really, I guess I really don't. Um, Shane's like halfway out the door. I don't know if any of you have noticed that with when, the, when one kid's out or the other older kids are out and your last one's left at home, they think they're already gone. They're much more independent much more quickly. And I also, I do realize, and I really hope Jake is not watching this video, that we are much more, I don't want to say lax, but we are, we let him do more at a younger age than Jake did. I guess that's just the nature of the birth order thing. I'm an old, I'm the oldest in the family. Michael being the baby, I think he did get away with more and he will probably agree with that. Um, but I mean, that's just how it is. But so I'm realizing, oh my gosh, I mean, we do have a lot of just Michael and I time. Shane's out with his friends, Shane's doing things. And while Michael and I do have a lot of, let's say extracurricular activities that we do without our kids, it still revolves a lot about our kids. Like one of the boards we both sit on is through the school. In two years when Shane's not there anymore, we can't sit on that board. I think they'll kick us off. So, and it would be silly for us to be there. We, you know, why would we sit on the athletic booster club board if we don't have an athlete at the school? Um, there will be other parents that want to do that and we need to find something else to do. So I started to think about that. How do we make friends? How do we stay connected with those friends? It will definitely take more effort. It's easy to connect with friends when you know you're going to see them once a week at the football game or at the picking up from theater practice or, you know, whatever it is your kid does. Um, it will definitely take more effort. That being said, Michael and I do volunteer in other ways, and I think that's the key word is volunteering. You do have to get involved in your community in some way. Um, you don't have to go change the whole world, but um, Michael is now very involved in our homeowners association. He sits on the board. I used to sit on the board. Now it's his turn. He's having a lot more fun at it than, than I did because he's way more qualified. So that's that helps when you're qualified for the position. Um, so he's making friends that way and getting and meeting more people, I should say, also. Um, so that's one way. We're both kind of looking to expand our horizons through our new puppy that's coming soon, through Rowdy, because one of the things the breeder really wanted us to do is she didn't just want us to have a pet or a new family member, is she really wanted us to, the dog had to have a job so to speak. Rowdy's grandfather has won a championship in every area of um, that he can win an award in, in the AKC awards. So confirmation, agility, field, tracking, obedience. Ha! Most important one, I forgot. It's not the most important, but it would be great to have an obedient dog. Uh, especially Weimar on her. Wow, that's, that's hard. Anyway, so she, we're not gonna like go out and become show people. Have you ever seen the movie Best in Show? That's confirmation. Uh, that's not going to happen. But we thought it would be fun to tr try agility at some point. And agility is like the obstacle courses that you see the dogs running through. When Rowdy gets a little bit older, we're going to start him, well, after obedience training and all that stuff, we're going to teach him agility. Teach us agility is, is probably more accurate. So anyway, we feel like that will introduce us to you know, more people and give us an activity that is not dependent on what our children are doing. So I guess that's one way of making new friends. But really, I mean, we have friends. It's just going to take effort to make sure we actually see them without the weekly football game and all the other stuff that we are used to seeing uh, them. So back at you guys, for those of you that have gotten to that stage in your life, how do you do it? Like, how do you stay connected? What do you do? Do you do, um, I remember when Michael was in the Air Force, as a young officer, we were involved in the, um, I was involved in the Officer's Wives Club and we would do things like Bunko Club and monthly supper clubs and there was a range. There was like the young, the young married couples and then there were the empty nester couples in the group. And it seems like that's the two groups that seem to have the free time to do that kind of stuff, like the before kids and the after kids. I like to research and I like to prepare myself. So I do think I should start thinking about 
the next 10, 15 years out, like what's coming. So let me know if you're interested in um, going on that journey a little bit with me. And I know for those of you with younger kids, you can't even fathom what it's like just to not have kids in diapers. Like that's how I was. You can't even think that much farther ahead. Well, here I am, we're way out of diapers and I can't even think much more than two or three years out. So for those of you who have experienced the emptiness side, can you give us some feedback? What should we expect? All right, thank you. I would really appreciate it if you can give me some feedback on this in general, some more topics to discuss. Um, again, do you want it to be just general, global topics, general female-oriented topics? Do you want more personal, more like Ask Marnie kind of topics? A little of everything. This is our, our channel, our time, so it's really, goes both ways. So let me know what you're interested in hearing about. Have an amazing Thanksgiving if you're an American and you're celebrating it. Um, have a great time with your family. I cannot wait. Our first paleo Thanksgiving. And until then, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.